this is this is our sort of batch of uh, things that you didn't get to see that uh, some of some of them I'm glad you didn't and some of them I, I wish you would have uh, time permitting but it wasn't so here we go okay now this is actually this now this wasn't a deleted level this was uh, the prototype that the team put together um, I don't even know what the date on this is but but you know three years uh, f ago and uh, it was really just to get a, get the basic mechanics not even tuned or anything but you know you could run you could swim you could swing and uh, if you if you look at this level a little bit, you'll see uh, we certainly didn't reuse uh, any of the main art, but you'll see kind of like that shot there is sort of the precursor to some of the shots we have in the game, uh, the rope swinging mechanic, and a lot of this. So you'll recognize uh, if if you've played the game and remembered the game, uh, you, you'll recognize some of the like the, the the level when you pull into Athens at first. This this bottom section is based on that. Um, and the whole cliffs that you climb here, we actually just sort of ripped these out directly from the demo <clears throat> and uh, built the cliffs level, the cliffs of madness or the cliffs of insanity, I forget what we ended up calling it. Um, God, it's amazing to see this little guy running around. He looks so not like Kratos. Um, that guy there uh, was the original Cyclops who was dying, um, who just never really looked like a Cyclops. He looked just like a big guy with a stick. And then this was the, the room, the, the only room that we built that was like the final room and everything else was kind of rough. And I remember seeing this and going, everybody saw this and said, man, this looks awesome. And then we were like, yeah, but how in the hell are we going to get, you know, all the levels in the game looking as good as that? And uh, I don't know if we ended up getting them all looking as good as that, but I think we came a lot closer than I thought we would. This, this level is pretty cool. This was our test level for... Uh, the Icarus wing. So, when, you know, I I Icarus and uh, Daedalus. Um, the Icarus story where he flew too close to the to the sun with the, with the wings that he had made and the wax melted and he fell to his death. That was sort of the the the, the inspiration for the mechanic. And I, I still love this. I, I absolutely wish this had made it into the game. Um, we just, you know, it really came down to time and going, you know what, let's focus, let's get our fighting really good and let's get our platforming better and let's get our puzzles working and, and maybe we can come back to this and as is often the case, you just never have the chance to. So I'd love to see something like this, uh, you know, in future God of War titles because um, I think it's a great, uh, it's just fun. I mean, it's fun to fly around and what was cool about this is it wasn't just a flying level, it was you know, you could land and you could walk around and it, it was very a seamless experience versus, you know, now it's time for the flying level. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I look at this now and I'm like, damn, we should have gotten that in. What an awesome. These were the original Harpies. They were a lot bigger. They still read better. They look awesome, but uh, we just realized we needed more of like a bat-like, small-like little annoyance enemy. Um, these guys played like the skeletons, basically, flying versions of the skeletons, and there just wasn't much of a difference in gameplay, so we ended up kind of shrinking them down and making them bats. And this was what we call the mounting the titan level, which is Kronos the giant titan in the desert. And sadly, right now, the only way you get on the titan is uh, through a movie, and originally this was how it was going to be. You see this big thing, it's like a big watermelon in the background. That's actually Kronos. Uh, and Tobin, the designer, he's got him kind of moving towards the player, and those things that are falling are like mountains that are crumbling and stuff. So it's kind of like Kronos is, is rushing towards the player, crawling, and you're trying to run ahead of him in these platforming sections so that you can ultimately jump onto the structure that's on his back, and that'll lead you up to the temple. And I still love that idea. I, I really, really wish we could have done it. And it was just, we showed this to the, the tech guys, and we showed it to the artists, and they were just like, dude, that's, that's going to take forever. This, this is, was the original boss. There was a boss that originally, um, uh, look at that, that's awesome, that originally guarded Pandora's box. And again, we just didn't have time. And I know it's lame that uh, that's the one thing I regret about the Pandora design is that there are no bosses that uh, guard the box. You have the Minotaur boss down below, and then we've got this conveyor belt section, and that's kind of it. And we just, we just ran out of time. But this was originally pretty cool. It was you know, you had this moving platform up above, you had this giant kind of harpy vulture in the center uh, that was guarding the box, You and she had these eggs scattered all around the level, and in order to sort of entice her to fly around, you'd have to go find her eggs and break the eggs, and you'd kind of take the little baby birds inside, and you'd kind of carry them around and use them as bait, and again, not only was it kind of a cool mechanic, because you were having to get, you were slower as you carry these things around, um, but also I think it really helped with the character of Kratos, I mean, here he is, you know, cracking open eggs and ripping out little infant birds and using them for his own, uh, 
his own desires uh, and really pissing off this mama bird I thought was pretty cool. So here's just another quick idea. These are almost like little sketches for levels, you know, where you, you have a big open environment and then you've got the walls come down and it becomes a maze and you either do something and the walls come back up or it's on a timer. I mean, we did tons of these things, you know, where I'd have an idea or a designer would have an idea and it was like, you know, tr try something like this. So this level uh, is actually a level that we, we went so far as that we showed the press, we got it in magazines, and th this, this was really a hard cut for us to make, um, and for, especially for me to make. Um, I, I love the mechanic of it, and I love the, the platforming and the concept. And the concept was that you're riding this elevator, and um, you know if you get knocked off, um, obviously you'll die. And if you get off the elevator, the idea was it was going to originally be being chased by this massive sandstorm. And the elevator was really the only thing. It was sort of a magical elevator that protected you from the sand. And if you got off the elevator, um, the elevator would bypass you and the sandstorm would engulf you and kill you. And we just, the two things we didn't have time to do is we didn't have time to tune it and we didn't have time to build the sandstorm. But what I loved was this whole idea of, you know, getting off the elevator and having to catch back up with it. Um, so, you know, it, you'd have these little forks in the road and either you'd be forced, like coming up, you'd be forced to get off the elevator uh, or you could choose different paths. Um, and if you took one path, it was more combat heavy. One path was more platform heavy. And as you can see, I mean, we had this pretty much finished from a standpoint of uh, the art and the setup, but we were missing the big sandstorm and we were missing the... Uh, the tuning time to really make this fun and so it ended up getting cut this I love this was great this is great I love this for the elevator now it gets smaller I guess we we talked about putting this in the actual uh, oh see they suck whoever played this couldn't keep up with the elevator but that was the whole idea trying to keep up with the elevator so it's tough it's really tough when you have to cut ideas that you're really passionate about out of the game but uh, you you do so so you can make the other ideas that you do have in the game shine even brighter so it's sort of a constant process, or it's a constant aspect of the process that's just a really tough thing that you go through, but uh, I think it's worth it because it makes the overall product better. When it came to the characters and monsters and creatures that, that our hero is going to encounter, we're dealing with characters and creatures that everybody is familiar with. Um, Medusas, Cyclops, um, Centaurs, Minotaurs. One of the things that we had to do with all the characters, and I think you'll see this as you look through the concept art, one of the things that was very important to me was that when somebody looked at, at any of our characters, that they knew what they were. So what we could do basically there, as long as the character was down on all fours and I had three heads, you probably would accept that character as a, as a Cerebus, whether it was a werewolf, whether it was a dinosaur, you know, again, you would still accept that in our world and what we were doing in terms of building the mythology we were building, you would accept that. As far as a, a game creature is concerned, mostly what was fascinating me was the, the deep sea creatures and how freaky they look. And I was trying to pull up on some of that and uh, did uh, a number of different types uh, of hydras. I was told, okay, Ares would be uh, maybe 90% 90 90 elemental, 5 or 10% human, you know, and so that's kind of what I was going for on these beginning ones. Um, he's just pure power, you know, almost like he's this unstoppable force. And then, you know, Dave liked it, it's just he wasn't sure how we would do it. Probably was a slow transition towards being more human. So it's still kind of a huge guy, but he's got all this armor on that allows him to do all these things. So the idea was again to move a character um, into something that again would be a little bit more in the horror direction. And again, what it allowed us to do was get characters that were still reminiscent of what they were supposed to be in Greek mythology, but were uniquely ours. Um, so once we started moving in that direction, again, it opened up uh, a whole new kind of avenue of ways to explore those characters. What we really wanted to do was keep people uh, immersed in the mythology, in the Greek mythology, but give them a different kind of experience when it came to, to the characters and the creatures.
some of the earlier characters that uh, that had been played around with um, uh, some of them again just didn't feel right for the for the uh, for the time period um, some of them either felt overdressed or felt too fantasy a lot of the concepts too got got very detailed there were lots of flowing things and there was lots of hair and there was lots of, of things that if we had to just model it it probably would have been a little bit tougher to, to pull it off there was one character I remember when I first saw it that had kind of a um, almost kind of a, a tribal feel to it a very kind of African feel to it uh, which I thought was was pretty cool uh, didn't say Greek but I at, at, the, at the same time when I looked at that I thought you know you could, that would be a pretty cool character to work with we went through images of the lone wolf kind of characters where uh, you might have a hero with a little baby or a dog on his back um, so just to kind of give something different you know about the character and something that you can kind of relate to One of the original concepts behind the hero for God of War was to come up with a guy who was, his, his whole face was encased in a mask. And we thought that going with a mask would be, uh, you know, being able to paint his face in broader strokes so that when you were playing the game, he still had a lot of personality and you could still sort of read that when you saw the mask. But when we actually got it in the game, it ended up feeling very soulless and it didn't feel like the guy had a personality. That was, that was always one of the big, big elements that we were dealing with. Uh, you know, and it was difficult because, um, you know, we would often hear, it's not Greek enough, <laughs> and we're like, what does that mean? I'm using a, a actual, uh, you know, sometimes because we would use, it, we'd take it right from a Greek, um, some Greek sources, you know, and it was, it was very Greek, but I think what we really started seeing was, okay, no, it's not, um, it's not Greek enough according to what the general public knows. And that's kind of what we, what we had to go towards. Uh, these are, again, uh, very traditional. Some of these were very traditional kind of Greek images. And again, the, again, the more traditional it got, the more armor we put on him, the more he lost his, uh, his individualism. Every time we put something on, you know, Dave felt like, oh, he doesn't look brutal anymore. And, and we started realizing brutal also kind of related to the primal part of him, you know, and, and so we did spend a lot of time going through that, and, but uh, in the end we ended up still taking his clothes off, and that's what we went with, so. When I first saw this from Charlie, it was the first time that I really saw the brutal nature and the violent nature and the sort of the animalistic quality that would really become the foundation for Kratos. And I think starting to see these images was just like, uh, sort of confirmation that, th that this idea could really work and instead of giving him a, a traditional sword uh, going with these sort of chain blades was going to be much more dynamic and fluid and really fun to play with. The main goal for the character in the game was always to create someone that uh, looked uh, really brutal and really nasty and really violent. Instead of sort of going down the traditional route of a iconic Greek hero with the, with the plume helmet and the uh, the skirt and the toga and the sandals. We wanted someone who really made the player feel like he was being able to unleash his dark side. So the idea was always, how can we make him look more brutal? How can we make him look more violent and impulsive and nasty? And that desire always superseded sort of historical accuracy. So while you look at this guy and he may not totally feel at home in ancient Greece from a costume standpoint, uh, I think he achieves the greater purpose, which is to give players a character that they can play who really does let them just go nuts and uh, unleash the nasty fantasies they have in their head. So uh, the idea on the environments and, and uh, trying to create a Greek world was trying to create a feeling that uh, reminded you of, of Greece and that didn't feel too fantasy. So we were trying to walk that fine line between a, a fantasy game environment and a traditional Greek environment. And so part of it was, was again, trying to get stuff that made it feel Greek, not Roman, but Greek. Okay, when we first uh, start con concepting out uh, environments, it wasn't really defined as levels, you know. We picked out the uh, important locations such as Pandora and Athens and Hades and all I knew is like the game should feel really big. 
which means there is no like cramped area. It's more like like challenge against the god and like huge monsters. So the, the look of the environment should be like like huge, you know. So with each of the environments, what we tried to do was um, kind of move you through the world using color uh, to kind of uh, help move Dave's story along and kind of emphasize the emotional uh, impact of, of what he was trying to, of the story he was trying to tell. But at the same time, if, if I've just come out of, of, of the ocean uh, where I'm battling the hydra, um, where we've got, in that case, you know, there's, there's more kind of greens and, and, and blues and things like that. Uh, I don't want to go into that same uh, scenario color-wise again. Uh, it's like if I did the whole game in black and white, you'd get probably bored with it after a while. So one of the, also one of the interesting aspects, um, especially in the, um, in the Pandora section, was a lot of times you'll see multiple iterations on, on statues as well. And one of the reasons was that one of David's idea was he wanted those statues to come to life, whether it was Atlas or Poseidon rising out of the water. The things that were in that environment, the objects, um, the architecture, those types of things reflect what was going on again with David's story. Um, so in Pandora as an example, uh, that whole sequence is about uh, an architect who in David's mind is, is, is basically gone mad. And so the idea was the, the structures, the traps, the visual look of that should begin to reflect uh, kind, of a, kind of a madman in, in, in some instances. I did that piece even the level of the design wasn't solid yet. So, but my, my own uh, interpretation, I was thinking it's like things are like, there's no gravity, but at the same time, things are like kind of shifting all the time. And this infinite distance in the back, things are flying, falling, exploring. The mountain Olympus, that one, that one particularly, we don't, it's not, for the game art, it's more like, okay, we want to talk about Mount Olympus. So where's the image? That kind of thing. The goal of the, the world of God of War was really to create uh, a place that felt like, you know, a giant theme park ride, you know, or a, a giant set on one of these great high adventure movies and um, places that you'd really want to explore and, and spend time in and really feel like you were having this grand adventure. And I think these guys, you know, week after week continually uh, were able to come up with set pieces and ideas that they, they just top themselves constantly and continually and they've really given us this great world to play in and uh, I, I think they did an amazing job and I'm, I'm so grateful as a player that I get to actually play in this space. When men ask for the origin of Kratos, the true tale was never known. The truth is that Kratos, like all men, began life as a child. But childhood in ancient Sparta was a brutal existence. Children deemed fit and strong were trained to be warriors, the protectors of Sparta. The weaker children were caged, sent to the mountains to fend for themselves. They were not expected to survive. And while Kratos escaped the fate of the weaker children, his brother was not so lucky. The two, once inseparable, were now alone. Kratos would become legend, but the story of his brother has gone untold. A child left in the mountains, he had died years before. Coming of age in the underworld, he had but one desire revenge against the brother who deserted him all those years ago. Kratos had accomplished more than he'd ever dreamed possible. But he did not sit easily on his new throne. There was a secret in his past even he did not know. A secret he burned to uncover. 
born out of wedlock. Kratos was the bastard child of a shunned woman. There were rumors as to who the father was. Rumors that grew more and more preposterous. Until the woman finally left her small village. She swore a new life in Sparta. Kratos would never know the truth. Never know who his father really was. But now, as a man, Kratos returned to Sparta, determined to find his mother and discover the truth. Kratos' mother was not long for this world. Before she passed, Kratos demanded she tell him the truth. His mother knew the price she would pay if she revealed the name of Kratos' father. But it was time, at last, for her son to know who he was. No word need be spoken to bring about the prophecy of the curse. She was transformed into a merciless beast, one which would destroy even her own son. Putting aside the last remnants of affection for his mother, Kratos destroyed the beast she had become. With her last breath, she spoke the name of his father. For Kratos was no mere mortal. He was the son of a god. He was the son of Zeus, the father of Olympus. And with that knowledge came the certainty that one day soon, he would take his revenge against the father, against the god who had abandoned him all those years ago. The tale of Pandora's box remains to this day. After the weapon was taken from the temple, the structure endured. Kronos the Titan lived another thousand years, wandering the desert. That was long ago. The temple has gone silent, and the beast who bore it for so long has died. Relics of a world long past. But all myths need not be from the ancient times. Today, a band of explorers will make their way inside the just-discovered structure and find for themselves the temple still holds many dangers and many secrets. Soon, as with all great myths, a new hero will emerge. despair. By the gods, what have I become? Now, the only way to right the wrongs of his past is to master the powers granted him by the gods of Olympus. Medusa's gaze. Zeus's fury. Army of Hades. Poseidon's Rage. Blade of Artemis. The epic adventure of conquest. Destiny. And revenge. of war.
God War's been in development for about three years, roughly. It's including a pretty, a fairly lengthy pre-production cycle. And basically, it came from Dave Jaffe's head. There were so many ready-made play mechanics and gameplay mechanics in the Greek myths already that it was just like Medusa's head and Zeus's thunderbolts and battling Cyclopses and that mixed with just my love of the material was like, okay, this is, this is what we got to do. We got to do this game. Dave Jaffe came up to me and goes, what do you think about Greek mythology? I was immediately uh, intrigued by it. When they said, hey, we're thinking about Greek mythology for God of War, I was like, yeah, let's, let's definitely do that. The creative director of the game, Dave Jaffe, definitely comes up with a lot of this kind of stuff, and he you know, likes to involve the team in the design. So he comes up with ideas, you know, we sit around, he comes around, asks us our, his famous like one to 10, what do you think about this idea? God of War is our attempt to really elevate the action adventure genre to the next level. We wanted to bring combat, exploration, navigation, puzzle solving, all of sort of the classic elements of the genre, but we wanted to bring those to players in a fresh way, in a way that they haven't really seen before, and also at a scope and at a level and sort of this epic feel that they haven't really gotten before in a game. That's the whole idea behind God of War, is it's not just a game, it's, it's, it's an adventure like a movie. The sheer amount of, of concept art and work that went into developing all the characters and the look and feel of the game is, uh, is pretty unique. I've never seen so much effort put into uh, you know, concepting a game out, making sure that, that every environment is unique and uh, fits in with the theme of the game overall. I gave them my influences. It's really to their credit that they were able to sort of uh, extrapolate uh, what I was really going for into art, amazing art. So. I, I ended up sort of getting what I wanted, which was this high adventure, amazing fantasy setting, which was uh, inspired by the stuff that I grew up with, the movies that I grew up watching. But exactly how the game ended up looking the way it did was really, you'd have to ask the artist. Charlie Wynn has been part of the studio for quite some time, and what he's brought to God of War is um, extremely valuable. A lot of my job is to um, create images of um, what the game feels like. The mood of the game is, is, is dark. Uh, the main character, main character Kratos, is, is a very uh, disturbed character. The things I said to him, I said, brutal, nasty, violent, um, antisocial, pissed off, angry, Fuck you. That was my direction to Charlie. Uh, the hardest part about um, making Kratos was that the storyline wasn't really there yet. And so I was trying to create a character that um, didn't have that story behind him yet. I just said, come into work and get angry and see what happens. What they came back with was their versions of anger and the things that they were mad at and the things that, it was really kind of neat because you got to look at the concept art and kind of see how everybody dealt with anger and madness and chaos. The solution was to sort of start stripping away everything. Every time we took away a piece of armor, every time we took away a helmet, a shield, we started seeing more of this animalistic side to this character. Once we got that, it was just an issue of whittling it down, you know, from those 15 images, all of which felt the most brutal, and said, out of all these 15, that's the one. God of War is our attempt to really elevate the action-adventure genre to the next level. We're trying to do so much right now. Um, I mean, we want to bring this, um, you know, this experience to, to people, and we want it to be realistic. In order to do that, we have to push the PlayStation 2 as far as it possibly can go. We use uh, a, a well-known art package called Maya um, uh, to do almost everything in our, in our game. When we first started the game, it was how do you create beautiful, lush environments that are high polygon count, high texture detailed, beautiful lighting and just consistent through the game. Technologically, four or five years into a console, you know, most of the, of the big problems have been solved. So it's just a question of doing it better than everyone else. You first start with a sheet, and the sheet is um, also known as collision. That's the, the very bare bones minimum 
level of detail that the player actually interacts on. Any of these walls that the player can't go beyond. So this is the confines of the level. This is what, you know, what you're actually playing in, but that's not what you see. That's what the game's running in the background. If I turn the sheet off, now you can see there's actual artwork associated with that. Well, we definitely wanted to make the player feel like they were in uh, ancient Greece. You know, to go from really dark, depressing feelings, where you feel like, ah, oh, I have to, I just want to get out of here, to, um, you know, very bright, and you're in the desert, and it's, it's, you know, it's to make you feel like, wow, okay, it's a vast world, you know, it's a really big world out there. God of War is, is it's gonna, it's gonna look real, but it's also gonna have a take to it, you know, like a little bit of a fantasy twist, um, over the top, like blood and guts. I don't think that there's any other PlayStation game that achieves that that's out there. Every character in the game starts out with a, a single pose that every single animation derives from. When I'm starting to move like this, bring in the base pose and then kind of just start to block a few things out. Maybe even with general, just kind of moving the whole character all as one, getting the timing for things and then building out from the pelvis. So get the pelvis motion right, then get the chest involved with the pelvis, and maybe start doing the arms, come back with the legs, and then finish with the head and the fingers. So sort of whittling down until I get to that right. final look. The original vision, I think, what was what we wanted was very, very brutal. It's funny because we were like, let's go find some fight scenes um, in movies, and, and that's how we want this guy to move, and that's how nasty we want him to be. And it's weird because when we thought we'd find all these great movies, movie fights are really kind of tame when you think about it and we actually ended up with only two or three movies uh, that really really obscure films too that really when you saw it you were like oh my god that is just some nasty stuff <laughs> There's been quite a few uh, gameplay design sessions or, or meetings with the animators where we we get extremely uh, uh, <laughs> we move around a lot. My setup situation as I'm putting enemies into the game and I'm, I'm trying to get them very playable so that they can be placed in levels and go around is this big cartoony shaped, uh, very bright arena. And it's just a big wide open space and I put the guys in that and uh, I fight with them there, I tune them there, I set up all their moves and combos and their reactions. The Medusa head animation, uh, ripping the head off the Medusa, very long development cycle for that one. It was redone several times. We obsessed over it. I, obs I pissed off everybody. The animations aren't brutal enough. The art's not brutal enough. There's not enough blood. I want this game to make players just go nuts and feel that sense of anger and chaos. We're really, really hammering the quality and trying to get it to be as top notch as we can get it. There are several other games out there that are, that I would consider that are kind of the top tier in animation and we're trying to either meet or exceed what they do. People are gonna go, oh my God, this is what action adventure games have, have, have supposed to have been since the very beginning. I always say this is the game I've been wanting to make since I was a little kid. God of War, from a production perspective, has been extremely challenging. There's a number of areas that, um, you know, we've really been pressed time, money, resources. Making the game was definitely a fight. Uh, me and the team butted heads a lot. And there was this anger, I guess, that built up inside of me that I think I really transferred over to Kratos. And I look at Kratos now and it's like, that's me. We, I think we verbally abuse each other multiple times during the day. It's one of those, it's a great high-low thing. 
we start out the day we're really happy and then throughout the day we get very upset with each other and then happy with each other and then upset and hopefully we can leave and we're happy with each other and then we come back and we're happy with each other again. I'm always the guy that the engineers want to strangle because I try to absolutely push this engine to the max. We've wanted to strangle each other at least once a week. The prospect of beating the shit out of other workers has, uh, you know, occasionally arisen. We, we have not actually had any fist fights on the game yet. Um, no, I, fist fights certainly aren't um, allowed in a professional environment. If we're going to get into a physical fight, it's going to happen in the next three months. We're going into the, the most uh, stressful time of making a game, which is the alpha beta process. Alpha. 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 Alpha, baby. Alpha. So we're an hour from Alpha. Nothing's tuned and nothing's finished. What I am is tired. 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 Uh, tired and more tired. This is what Alpha is, right? All the pieces are there, but it doesn't play right yet and it doesn't feel right yet. And uh... There are a couple of big bugs that people are working on. If we don't get them by seven, then we'll get them done by eight or nine or ten. Three years and we're almost done. Light at the end of the tunnel. I'm really, I'm so happy we're an hour away from being able to say at least we have a game. Playtesting is uh, fantastically important and, and this is the first game that we've, we've really gone to town on, on the playtesting uh, while the game has been in development. We will bring you know, five or six people in from, from uh, the local colleges and uh, we'll sit them down in front of the latest version of whatever level we've been, uh, we've been building and we'll watch them play it and we'll notice all of the things that they don't do right or all the times that they can't find the way to solve a puzzle because we've obviously not highlighted it well enough or if they can't see the door in the background then we'll add an extra light in so it's highlighted. It's really kind of like making, a, you know, it's like making a movie. At the beginning of the project, we decided we were going to build a, a, a playtesting room in our office, um, and uh, that has proved to be a very good decision. There's our huge PlayStation booth. So, so good to be one of the big titles this year, so hopefully it'll get some attention that we think it deserves. I think whether you're into mythology or not, I think you can't deny the power of a game made by passionate people. God of War is a game that uh, anyone can pick up and play and have a really uh, fun experience. You should play God of War because it'll get you laid. This is the adventure that the back of the box has always promised you. God of War is fucking rad. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. But it had not always been this way. Kratos had once been a champion of the gods.
The visions, they were real! The gods came to me, told me their champion would come and rescue us from the Hydra. But you're too late! We're pinned down! Oh, these creatures, they came from nowhere. The ships are all destroyed, all hope is lost, Spartan, even for you- Visions, they were real! The gods came to me, told me their champion would come and rescue us from the Hydra. But you're too late! We're pinned down! Oh, these creatures, they came from nowhere. The ships are all destroyed, all hope is lost, Spartan, even for you- Lord Poseidon, Kratos. Before you reach Athens, there is a task you must complete. This beast, this Hydra, it has terrorized my seas for far too long. Your skills are admirable, but you will need assistance. You will need the power of the gods. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemies. Get them away from the ship! Why won't they die? It's the giant one! He keeps healing the others! No, I... God! We'll never get out of here! Doomed! We're doomed! We're all... Slaughtered like animals, the victims lay before him, a reminder of his own past, a past he could never escape. <laughs> his only solace was the sea, endlessly sailing from one harbor to the next in service to the gods of Olympus. All his hopes rested with them. For no matter how much wine he consumed or how many women he took to his bed, nothing on earth could rid him of the horrors that plagued his mind. <laughs> Athena! Ten years, Athena. I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? We request one final task of you, Kratos. Your greatest challenge awaits in Athens, where even now my brother Ares lays siege as we speak. Athens is on the verge of destruction. It is the will of Ares, my great city fall. Zeus has forbidden the gods from waging war on each other. That is why it must be you, Kratos. Only a mortal trained by a god has a chance at defeating Ares. And if I am able to do this, to kill a god, 
within the visions, they will end? Complete this final task, and the past that consumes you will be forgiven. Have faith, Kratos. The gods do not forget those who come to their aid. Leaving the rotting carcass of the Hydra behind, Kratos set sail once more. His greatest challenge and freedom from his growing madness lay before him in the ancient city of Athens. Run! Run! The beasts have taken Athens! Look out! No! No! Stay away from me! Do not fear, Kratos. I am the Oracle of Athens, here to help you defeat Ares. Find my temple to the east, and I will show you how to murder a god. Aphrodite. Kratos, the gods are pleased with your progress, but your current skills will not be enough to defeat the minions of Ares. I offer you the power to freeze your enemies where they stand, but you must earn such a gift. The Queen of the Gorgons! Bring me her head, Kratos, and I will give you the ability to wield its power. I know who you are. I know what you've done. Monster. Wait. Stay back. Get away from me. Lord Zeus. Kratos, you grow stronger as your journey continues. But if you are to succeed in your quest, you will need my aid. I offer you the power of the greatest of all the gods, the father of Olympus. I offer you the power of Zeus. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemies. <laughs> Good. 
Good, my boy. Good. Athena has chosen wisely. I knew it was so. Who are you? So, you have the blades, the skin as pale as the moon. You are the one indeed. Perhaps Athens will survive at that. <laughs> but be careful. Don't want you dying before I'm done with this grave. A grave? In the middle of a battle? Who will occupy it, old man? You will, my son. Oh, I've got a lot of digging to do indeed. All will be revealed in good time. And when all appears to be lost, Kratos, I will be there to help. And with that act, Kratos set in motion the events that would lead to his downfall. Kratos, as Athena herself has foretold. But you are late, perhaps too late to save Athens. Or is it Athens you have come to save? No, I, I can't! We must not stop! And when the Oracle Go looked into his soul, she saw a beast as well as a man. Once a captain in the Spartan army, Kratos had begun his command with only 50 soldiers. But soon his numbers grew to the thousands. His tactics were brutal, but effective. Drunk with power, he was feared by all, except one. His wife was the only one to brave his fury. How much is enough, Kratos? When will it end? When the glory of Sparta is known throughout the world. The glory of Sparta. You did this for yourself. His desire for conquest knew no bounds, but that which he desired would ultimately consume him. By the gods, why would Athena send one such as you? Stay out of my head! Choose your enemies wisely, Kratos. Your brute strength alone will not be enough to destroy Ares. Only one item in the world will allow you to defeat a god. Pandora's box which lies far beyond the walls of Athens, hidden by the gods across the desert to the east. But be warned, Kratos. Many have gone in search of Pandora's box. None have returned. Ah! Uh, Kratos, I'm slipping. You must get here quickly. I can help you. We can save Athens, but you must hurry. Kratos, the journey forward is perilous, but one you must complete if you are to have any hope of saving Athens. The Oracle spoke of Pandora's box. Can it be real? The box exists. It is the most powerful weapon a mortal can wield. And with such a weapon, I could defeat Ares. With the box, many things become possible, and so it is hidden well far across the desert of lost souls. There is safe passage through the deadly sands, but only those who hear and follow the siren's song will discover it. You must find the sirens, Kratos. Only they can guide you to Kronos, the Titan. A Titan lives? Kronos is the last. Zeus has commanded him to wander the desert endlessly, the Temple of Pandora chained to his back until the swirling sands rip the very flesh from his bones. Stay true to the song of the Siren Kratos. Your journey begins here.
pray it leads you back to Athens with Pandora's box. Kronos, the last of the mighty titans, emerged from the desert sands. On his back, Pandora's temple awaited, massive and patient, ready to challenge all who went in search of its guarded treasure. For three days, Kratos climbed the sheer walls of the mountain. He knew he would either recover Pandora's box or perish inside the cursed temple, never to return to the world of man. Ravaged Athens. Legions of undead soldiers. Greek mythology's greatest beasts. And a deceptive god. Are no match for the fury of one vengeful warrior. God of War. From that point forward, throughout the rest of time, whenever men rode forth to battle for good cause or for evil, they did so under the watchful eye of the man who had defeated a god. They were driven forward by Kratos, the mortal who had become the new god of war. Please, take us home! Do you see, God of War? You took them once, but you'll never have them again! You cannot save them, Kratos. You gave them up in your quest for ultimate power. There is a price to pay for everything you gain. Not that price. A 
didn't want them to die. No price is too high for what I offered. And you rejected me. A god! Now, you will have no power. No magic! All that is left for you is death! Oh, not... not again. You should have joined me, Kratos! You should have been stronger! By the gods. The battle was not over. The gods, it seemed, had a final gift for Kratos. I still have allies in Olympus, Ares. Now, you will see how strong I am. I couldn't stop them. They were too strong. Remember, Kratos. It was I who saved you. In your time of greatest need. I haven't forgotten, Ares. I remember how you saved me. That night... I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. Kratos had done me impossible. A mortal defeating a god. Ares was no more. The city had been saved and would thrive again. The same could not be said for Kratos, for as he sought to rebuild his soul with the help of the gods, the truth was revealed to him. Athena, rid me of the memories that haunt me still. You have done well, Kratos. Though we mourn the death of our brother, the gods are indebted to you. We promised your sins would be forgiven, and so they are, but we never promised to take away your nightmares. No man, no god could ever forget the terrible deeds you have done. In the end, knowing the visions of his past would never leave him, Kratos made his way to the bluffs overlooking the Aegean Sea. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. The fate of Kratos was not as it seemed. The gods had other plans. Born aloft like a feather, Kratos found himself risen from the sea and placed on solid earth. You will not die this day, Kratos. The gods cannot allow one who has performed such service to perish by his own hand. Ares' tactics were brutal. His path of destruction had to be stopped. But now there is an empty throne in Olympus, and a new god of war is needed. Take these stairs, Kratos. They lead to your ultimate reward.
But to break a man's spirit is to truly destroy him. Do you recognize this place, Spartan? The location of your greatest failure? Perhaps there is a chance you can undo the deeds of the past. The nightmares that had haunted Kratos for the past ten years had now taken form and substance. His past stood before him. Gods, can this be real? Daddy! Kratos had traversed the desert of lost souls, bested the deadly traps of Pandora's temple, and escaped Hades itself. There was but one task left. Zeus! Do you see now what your son can do? You cast your favor on Athena, but her city lies in ruins before me. And now, even Pandora's box is mine. Would you have me use it against Olympus itself? Kratos returned even from the underworld. Is this the best you can do, father? You send a broken mortal to defeat me, the god of war? After thousands of years, Pandora's box was finally open. The power of the gods unleashed. Still just a mortal. Every bit as weak as the day you begged me to save your life. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. You have no idea what a true monster is, Kratos. Kratos, and not a moment too soon. I only finished digging just a moment ago. Who are you? Now that is an interesting question. But for now, you must hurry. Athens needs you. But how did you know I was- Athena isn't the only god keeping watch on you, Spartan. Complete your task, Kratos, and the gods will forgive your sins. After a thousand years, Pandora's box was at last freed of its confines. Kratos had found the means to destroy the god of war. Far away in Athens, Ares knew Kratos had succeeded in his quest. So, little Spartan, you've recovered Zeus's precious box. But you will not live long enough to see it opened. I will see to that. <laughs> Goodbye, Spartan. You will rot in the depths of Hades for all eternity. As the life began to leave Kratos, his thoughts returned to that fateful night. Even in death. The memories, the visions would not fade. For how could he forget spilling the blood of his own family? A cruel trick orchestrated by the God of War. My wife, my child, how they were left in Sparta. 
You are becoming all I'd hoped you'd be, Kratos. Now, with your wife and child dead, nothing will hold you back. You'll become even stronger. You will become death itself. But as the flames consumed the temple, Kratos realized his true enemy was the god who once saved his life. The same god who had now taken everything from him. Ares! From this night forward, the mark of your terrible deed will be visible to all. The ashes of your wife and child will remain fastened to your skin, never to be removed. And with that curse, all would know him for the beast he had become. His skin white with the ash of his dead family. A ghost of Sparta had been born. In the end, in death, he had failed. As the minions of Ares claimed Pandora's box, Kratos' life faded, and his cursed soul was cast into the fires of Hades. And Kratos fell into the underworld, the river Styx beckoning below, the current strong enough to carry even the strongest mortal to his eternal resting place. But Kratos had no intention of resting yet. He intended to live, to return to Earth and complete his quest. Let go, fool! You won't drag me down to that cursed river! There is a task left for me above. I will see it completed. You again? Kratos, your quest is at an end. You are the first mortal to ever reach Pandora's box. There is still time to save Athens. You must bring the box back to my city and use it to kill Ares. Return to Athens, Kratos. Return and save my city. The path before Kratos was clear, but still, the memories came rushing back, as familiar and permanent as the blades chained to his wrists. Memories of what he'd done in the name of Ares. Memories of how he'd become a servant to the god of war. A beast. His humanity robbed and replaced only with the will to murder. No one was safe. Entire armies fell before Kratos and the soldiers who followed him on his unending path of conquest, all in the name of his master. Those who offered resistance of any kind were dealt with quickly. They've built this temple to offer prayers to Athena! This entire village stands as an affront to Lord Ares! Burn this village! Burn it to the ground! Emboldened by the god of war, Kratos' army was ruthless, feared throughout the world for their brutality. All that mattered was conquest in the name of Kratos, their great leader, who had become near invincible. He feared nothing. But there was something about this temple, something forbidden. All his instincts told him he should never cross its threshold. Never step inside. Beware, Kratos. The dangers in the temple are greater than you know. But the village oracle's warning fell on deaf ears. His ambition would not be denied. All who opposed him would die.
In that instant, the glory he had reveled in turned to horror. The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. With that act, Kratos knew he could no longer serve his master. He had but one calling now, the death of Ares. He would murder the god of war. Ares, you will die for what you did that night. Kratos had been in service to the gods long enough to know the Harpy had been sent as a warning, a reminder from his former master of the decision that had cost Kratos everything. Had it been that long since he'd almost met his end at the hands of the barbarians? That long since he'd traded everything to save himself? Ares! The sky split apart and the god of war stepped through. Descending from Olympus, he saw the makings of a god in a mere mortal. Ares would save Kratos. He would turn him into the perfect warrior, his servant on Earth. Only a simple pledge of loyalty was required. My life is yours, Ares. From this day, I shall carry forth your will. And his fate was sealed. As promised, Ares rescued his new disciple, bringing forth the power of a god, destroying those who would slaughter Kratos and his men. As for Kratos, no mere sword and shield would befit the newest servant of the god of war. The blades of chaos, forged in the foulest depths of Hades. Once attached, the chains remained so, chained and seared to the flesh, a part of the bearer's body, a permanent reminder of Kratos' pledge. In return, ultimate power. The rage of Ares exploded from within. But soon, he would learn the true cost of such power. A cost too high even for Kratos to pay. Wretched beast! I know who it is you serve! Return to your master! Tell the god of war I am his no longer. Tell him he is not safe while I walk the earth. I will find Pandora's box. And I will use it to see him tremble and fall before me. Lord Hades. Your progress is impressive, Kratos. But your skills will not carry you to your ultimate goal. I offer you the souls of Hades itself. The souls of the dead, who stand ready to fight by your side. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power, and use it to defeat your enemies.
Artemis. Kratos, the gods demand more of you. You have learned to use the Blades of Chaos well, but they alone will not carry you to the end of your task. I offer you the very blade I used to slay a titan. Take this gift and use it to complete your quest. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemies. The wrecked bodies of those who had gone in search of Pandora's box lay before him, and at once Kratos knew who was responsible. For this was not the first time he'd seen the ruined Ares and his minions had left in their wake. Kratos had experienced it firsthand years before. The youngest and boldest captain in the Spartan army, Kratos inspired fierce loyalty in his men. It had always been enough to carry them through any battle until this day. The barbarians to the east numbered in the thousands and descended on the Spartans without mercy. The battle lasted near hours. The discipline and training of the Spartans did little to stem the tide of the merciless barbarians. The soldiers faced a massacre, while their young captain faced the end of his brilliant career and his life. But to Kratos, victory was worth any price, even his soul. Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. That desperate call for aid would come to haunt Kratos for all his days. By the gods, what have I become? Thank the gods you've come! Break these bars! Get me out of here! What are you waiting for? Let me out! We can find our way back to Athens! The gods demand sacrifice. From all of us. Oh, please! No! No! So, you think you can conquer the Temple of the Gods, do you? It's never been done, you know. Sooner or later, the Harpies will bring what's left of you back for me to burn. The Gods hid Pandora's box in here, so no mortal would ever claim its power. 
And yet, year after year, I open the gate for more and more soldiers and place more and more bodies on these pyres. If I were you, I'd leave now. But I can see you are determined. Very well. May the gods grant you strength to conquer the perils that lay before you. Good luck, Spartans.